55 years old, and the game earlier this First of all, I'd like to thank God for giving me the opportunity to play this game of basketball, and I'd like to thank him for giving me the chance to come here at the Indiana University and get an education. Thank you. I'd like to thank my mother and my father for all the love and support that they have given me over the years, because without them, uh, I don't know where I would be. <laughs> I really can uh, top what Winston just said. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the players uh, for giving me a fine season this year, and also the past players that I've played with. Also, I'd like to thank the coaching staff for uh, allowing me to attend Indiana University to play in a uh, top notch program in the country. I don't have much to say after uh, these two seniors, but uh, I guess I should call, uh, uh, thank Coach Knight first, the coaching staff, because about uh, their belief in me, I wouldn't have been here. Uh, you know, one thing they've taught me more uh, about life and, uh, and then basketball. So it's really going to carry on when I get out here and graduate in May to get out in the real world. And, uh, you know, last but not least, it's all you fans. You know, I really, I can hear uh, when I do get in the games. And, uh, <laughs> It's easy to block the fans out, but I can hear, you know, I can hear the support, and it's really I've been a lot to me, and it will for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. So that was the scene, folks, as we glance back to last Sunday postgame following the 80-73 victory over the Iowa Hawkeyes. And the trio of Winston Morgan, Stu Robinson, and Courtney Whitty still with a mission, and that's the Big Ten Championship to be won this week and a big leg of it uh, coming a little later tonight at Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing, Michigan. Hi, everybody, and welcome aboard. The backdrop again quiet, but it will be noisy in about, oh, 28 minutes or so as we uh, go to Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing where a crowd, a sellout crowd of over 10,000 will be cheering on those Michigan State Spartans. You know, it's really hard to believe since we started the show some uh, few weeks ago uh, that the Big Ten has been, what, 16 games and uh, nine and a half weeks, and it has boiled down after an 0-2 start for Indiana to this particular week. Michigan State tonight and the Michigan Wolverines on Sunday afternoon in Ann Arbor. You know, we go back, uh, really, to January the 5th, that Sunday afternoon in the Assembly Hall. It indeed was a funny basketball game. Remember the 8-1 to start? I think our graphic uh, illustrates uh, how even the ball clubs were, with the exception of rebounding. Indiana shot well enough to win most games, but look what Michigan State fired. And really, that, uh, that percentage has only come down a couple of points all season long. 79% from the free throw line for the Spartans, but there's the key, rebounding. They murdered Indiana the first time around 32-22. to 22. The bench scoring was Indiana's way. Stu Robinson had a solid game off the pines with 10 points and 3 assists, a block of steal, and a rebound. In that ball game back in January, uh, the first week of the Big Ten season. Scott Skiles scored 20, but Daryl Johnson, he suffered a one for eight shooting day and uh, finished with only three points. On the Hoosier side, Steve Alford had 23 points and Rick Calloway 20. Winston Morgan, a fine all-round ball game with 10 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists. But again, the key will be the board work, and Andre Harris will come into focus here. He played but 17 minutes, had only five points and two boards. But uh, you really can't even measure how far Harris has come since January the 5th. The Jenison Jinx, as the graphic uh, illustrates, Michigan State tough to beat at home. 9-28, they're 13-1. The only loss suffered at the hands of the Purdue Boilermakers, 88-83 on January the 9th. The Spartans have won six straight at home, and uh, since then, well, have reeled off uh, some uh, excellent basketball at both ends of the court. Bob Knight at Jenison Fieldhouse, still a little above 500, despite the fact that it has indeed been a tough place for Indiana to play basketball. Bob is 7-6 and six in 13 ball games down through the years, but the Hoosiers, his team, Teams have dropped three of their last four in East Lansing. The interesting statistic, and there really aren't that many uh, college coaches uh, coaching this day that hold an advantage over Bob Knight. Judd Heathcote, though, is one of them. 
In 20 head-to-heads, Bob has won only 9 of 20 meetings for 45%. And Heathcote has really rubbed it in as of late, with uh, the Spartans uh, winning 5 out of the last 6. But Bob still overall in 29 bowl ga ball games holds a 17 to 12 advantage. The last win with Michigan State having won four in a row. The last win for Indiana, ironically enough, came at East Lansing at Jenison Fieldhouse back in 84 when the Hoosiers won that ball game 70 to 62. Well, we have lots to talk about. We'll take a closer look at this one in the capsule form. Kit Klingelhofer will be joining me and we'll be back with more on our final tip-off show for 1985 and 6. And a big one it is, Indiana at Michigan State. We're back right after these messages. Eastgate Chrysler has become one of the largest retailers of Chrysler's in Plymouth in America by selling cars for prices like this. This is the finest minivan money can buy, the Voyager. You get front wheel drive and a five year 50,000 mile warranty free. Oh, and one other thing, if you buy half a dozen Voyagers, you get your own personal bodyguard, the two-time light heavyweight champion of the world, Marvin Johnson. I'll Marvin. finish it. Help! <laughs> East Cape Chrysler Plymouth, just 500 North Shalin, Indianapolis. How much suit do you think you can get for $145? If you say not much, then you've never been to one of my stores. I'm Kuppenheimer, and at Kuppenheimer, we make every suit ourselves, and we sell them in our own stores. There's no middleman. So I can give you more suit for your money than anybody. Oh, sure, you could pay a lot more someplace else. But why on earth would you do that? There have been some important changes in 86 car owner manual recommendations that Penzoil wants you to know about. These two motor oils, 5W30 and 10W30, have the only multi-grade viscosities recommended for all new GM, Ford, and Chrysler four-cylinder and small six-cylinder engines. Use Penzoil 5W30 for winter, 10W30 for summer. Check your owner's manual and then protect your small car with Penzoil, the standard of protection since 1889. Here he comes now. You see anything suspicious? I don't know. Keep staring at a cigar like there's something different about it. I bet it's the wrapper, huh? Yeah, most cigars don't use natural leaf wrappers anymore. Now, gosh, your Vegas still gives you the rich tobacco taste of natural leaf wrappers. He's still staring at it. Hey, Jimmy, go on over and give him an honest cigar. <laughs> gosh, your Vega, still an honest cigar. He's doing it again. Well, back with our capsule look with Sports Information Director Kit Klingelhofer. And Kit, we enter now the final week of the season, and I think there are seven other teams that wish they were in our position to at least have a chance to win the title this week. Down to three teams, Indiana, Michigan, and tonight's opponent, Michigan State. Uh, it's going to be a tough week because Michigan and Michigan State both playing very good basketball. But you're in, at least Indiana's in a position to play for the championship, and that certainly looked questionable after the first week of the Big Ten season when Indiana was 0-2. You know, it was a game, possibly, that Indiana let get away back in early January, but the squad has come a long way. Michigan State has to be the surprise of the Big Ten. Well, I don't think there's any question of surprise of the Big Ten because I think everybody looked at Michigan State going into the league standings and said, hey, they haven't got any kind of front line. They can't possibly compete week in and week out, and uh, lo and behold, their guards have carried them without question. Skiles, Johnson have done a great job. Uh, perhaps it, it was a game that did get away from Indiana when the two teams met, but again, that was a difficult time because Indiana had come off a very tough loss to Michigan, a game that they'd prepared for for a long period of time, and then, of course, losing Darrell Thomas on virtually the last play mm. uh, on the practice, the night of practice before Michigan State really played an effect in that game. The Hoosiers were 15 down, came back and tied, but couldn't quite get over the hump. Anything in the capsule as we glance at it tonight catch your eye? Well, you know, you look at Indiana and Michigan State on the capsule, and, you know, there's a lot of similarities. The records are the same, 20 and 6 overall. Indiana has is one game better than the Big Ten. Uh, both teams have a huge winning margin. Michigan State, though, is one is number one, one of the highest scoring teams that the Hoosiers will play all year, or have played all year, 83 points a game. And as well as Indiana shoots, 54% from the field, 74% from the free throw line, Michigan State shoots even better, 56% from the field, uh, which is second in the nation last week. And they have a chance to set a new Big Ten record for field goal percentage in conference games only, and 81% from the foul line, which is the best in the country. So Michigan State, collectively is the best shooting team in the nation. So it's going to be uh, a very tough defensive assignment trying to keep Michigan State down. And, you know, you look at that first game, and Michigan State shot just about what they're shooting 
for the season against Indiana. We saw, shot another graphic, too, at the start, showing Indiana getting murdered on the rebounds. But, you know, Harris, uh, he was not a factor in the first ball game. And Darrell Thomas didn't play. Right. So, you know, you combine those right. two factors, and obviously uh, we're much better on the boards now, I feel, just by Andre Harris's presence. You had Darrell Thomas to the lineup when he didn't play against the first game, and hopefully Indiana will be better on the boards tonight. Well, Kit was talking about how Michigan State gets up and down the court, 83 points. Tempo, indeed, could be a very big, vital asset to this uh, particular basketball game for the Hoosiers to control one way or the other. And with some comments and thoughts of the game ahead, Coach Bob Knight. There are really two different kinds of basketball teams that, that can be successful. One is a team that can dictate the tempo of play simply because it plays at a specific tempo and can really determine that this is the way the game is going to be played. When I coached at West Point, we had very, very good defensive teams on occasion that made it difficult for other teams to score. When we had the basketball, we didn't get it up the court in a hurry. We took our time. We wanted the game to be a half-court game. And almost without exception, we were able to dictate how the game was going to be played through our defense and through the use of time in setting up the shot that we would take offensively. Now, it's always easier to slow down a game than it is to speed up a game. And if you take teams that both have pretty good talent, one of which plays a slow, conservative style of basketball, the other plays a very quick open court game, the team playing the slower game usually will be able to determine how the game is going to be played. One of the things that really enhances a fast-paced team is its ability to apply full court pressure. If it doesn't apply full court pressure, then maybe the other team can slow the game down to a more comfortable pace for it, a more comfortable pace for uh, its players, the way they prefer playing. Now, we have an interesting game here tonight from the standpoint of pace. Michigan State really likes to play a quick-paced game. They would like to play a game that would be in the upper 80s, or 90s, thinking that the shooting ability that they have throughout their team would enable them to come out on top in a game like that. I don't think that we have that kind of shooting ability to play in such a game. However, I do feel that we have good, strong inside play to supplement the shooting that we do have, which is primarily that of Steve Alford. Yet, what we have to do is get the game to a point tonight where we can go inside, where we can use Darrell Thomas, Ricky Calloway, Andre Harris inside, not only giving them a chance to rebound offensively, but getting them the ball in the post where they can play with it inside. We still have to take advantage of getting open court opportunities to score. Calloway moving into the middle, taking the ball to the basket. Uh, Steve with the outside shot that he has. And we'd like to get that outside shot for him any time that, that we can, whether it be in the early stages of the offensive uh, conversion, fast break, secondary break, or somewhere throughout the course of our offense. Now, in our game with Iowa, we really took our time moving Iowa's defense. And our whole thought was, let's get the defense moving from one side of the court to the other. And it won't move, uh, in, it will not be a synchronized movement, uh, is what I should say. It's not going to move with the same space existing between players all the time. Two players move, they come back, and now when they make the second movement, they may be a little bit wider spread. And that gives us a chance to get into that gap, where there was no gap on the first pass, now there's a considerable gap in here, and we can get through it either on the dribble or with the pass. Michigan State really doesn't apply any kind of pressure. Michigan State sits in the zone, trying to control the middle, forcing the outside shot, wanting you to shoot it so they can get the ball going the other way as quickly as possible. We have to do two things in this ball game tonight, I feel. We've got to get the ball inside and take advantage on what one of our strengths in this particular game, I think, will be. Now, I mentioned uh, at the start of our little pregame show here 
that there are two ways a team can be successful. It can dictate tempo uh, defensively, offensively, slowing the game down, speeding it up, or a team that can change the tempo from game to game. Now, we're that kind of a team if we're going to be successful. There have been some games we've played this year where we wanted the game to be played at a quick tempo, where we wanted to go up and down the floor, where we thought our ability to do so was better than theirs and we wanted to take advantage of it. I don't think that we can get in a running game with Michigan State and come out on top. What we've got to do is work the Michigan State defense, get the ball inside, do some scoring inside, get to the free throw line, from being able to get the ball inside and complement that with the kind of outside shooting necessary to keep the zone spread a little bit. We're going to have to move Steve from one point to another against the zone so they can't keep track of him, that he's not going to be on this side all the time, that he might be on top, he might be here, he might work out of the high post area. But basically, we want this to be a half-court game. We want Michigan State to have to work at its offensive end to get the shot out of its offense rather than on a spread court situation. The best way to keep a team from running is to take its running players inside defensively. Now, Michigan State doesn't allow you to do that because they play a zone. And in playing a zone, we've got to get the ball inside, score with it, and get to the free throw line. Because in doing each of those things, you're taking away opportunities for them to break the ball up the court and do what they want to do offensively. So this will be a game where tempo will have a significant bearing uh, on the outcome. If Michigan State is able to go up and down the floor and get shots quickly, uh, hit those shots, then we're not going to be able to control the tempo of the game. If, however, we can work the zone, get the ball where we want to take it, and then score with it, then you'll see the kind of game that I think uh, enables us to play at a tempo that would be much, much better for us. Let's hope that we can do that. He's number 34 and is IU's chief of SWAT, as in bat, block, Andre Harris, the elevator man with sneakers. 13 rebounds against Iowa last Sunday, and Andre combined that with 15 points. Three assists, two blocks, and two steals. Now, he's led the Hoosiers in rebounds in four of the last five games, and over that span is averaging over eight boards per contest. And Harris also is averaging nearly 12 points over the last five games. He's IU's chief of SWAT, Andre Harris, who is jumping to new highs these days. Looking for the right store could be a wild goose chase without the complete shopping guide, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. You might find yourself looking for something in all the wrong places. Lose all sense of direction. Arrive too late and come back empty-handed. Why leave yourself open to all that? Just open the book, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Recently, Chi Chi's Mexican restaurant sent its master chef Tomas to a new place to look for recipes. He has just returned. The result is shrimp chajitas. Tender shrimp sizzling on a blackened iron skillet, simmering in seasoned butter. You can even wrap them in warm tortillas. It's one of our many regional seafood feasts of Mexico, all at great prices. Chi Chi's, reaching new depths to bring you great food. Presenting some incredible things you can do with the new John Deere Long Tractor. You can cut grass more evenly because we've given it a new mowing deck. Ride more quietly because we've enclosed the engine. Carry heavier loads because we've added more horsepower. But the most incredible thing you can do with the new John Deere Tractor is take one home because we've lowered the price. Isn't that incredible? Call Healy Equipment in Franklin, 738-2250. Now is the time to buy. Enter a new dimension of sight and sound. Scotch EG all-purpose video cassettes. The popular choice for today's high-quality VCR recording. Now, with patented time-left gauge, 
to ensure that your videotape will never come up short. Scotch EG Video Cassettes. On sale for $4.79 through Saturday at all Target stores. You know, one department the Hoosiers controlled, especially the first 20 minutes, the backboards. Here, Morgan on the follow off of Andre Harris's miss. It's 12-4 now when Andre grabs one of his 13 boards and puts it back in. Good offensive rebound. You know, you kind of had the old feeling Sunday that things were going to go right when Harris somehow, some way, put this one back in. It's 14-4, Indiana, six minutes into the first half. The lead is now stretched to nine when Alford gets in close for two. Indiana fans hit nine of its first 13. And with 2.30 to go, Stu Robinson off the bench gets into the scoring act, extending the Hoosier lead to 16 at 42-26. Andre Harris, what a turnaround in his game as of late. And uh, speaking of turnarounds, bingo. Lots of action in the final minute at IU's end. Finally, Morgan gets the pumpkin to fall on this tip. The Hoosiers, 46-28. Iowa does cut into the lead with five unanswered points. It's 46-33 at half. Indiana hits 60% from the field the first 20 minutes and outboarded the Hawkeyes, 22-11. Mark, Indiana has a commanding 19-point lead at 64-45, but the Hawks start a 24-6 run that got them right back into the hunt. Speaking of dunks, the Horton Steel here, three-quarters court, and here comes Andre Banks. And that lead of Indiana slips to 11 at 64-53. Moe now trims it to 70-67 with this 20-footer. And with 3-10 to play, Horton. And Iowa, believe it or not, has fought back to within one at 70-69. Now Mr. Reliable. And here comes what Bob Knight called the key play of the game. The key shot, if you will delivered by none other than Steve Alford. 72-69, and a minute later, a little deeper perhaps on that left baseline, let's call this one a 24-footer. Swish, 74-69, final 80-73. Hoosiers close out at home 13-2, and, and now have won 12 of 14 after an 0-2 start at home. But the 0-2 start was nine and a half weeks ago, and the Hoosiers can do some evening up starting tonight and in the process, keep the Big Ten crown out in front of them as they battle red-hot Michigan State. More people buy their new cars at Eastgate Chrysler than at any other Chrysler Plymouth dealership in over 30 states. And that includes Indiana. Because at Eastgate Chrysler, you get discounts like this or financing like this. And over 700 cars to choose from. Now listen. To sell one of these cars, we'll do whatever it takes to make a deal with you. Come see us. You'll save money. That, I promise you. Eastgate Chrysler Plymouth, just 500 North Shadeland, Indianapolis. Sounds like a taste I can't get off my mind. Sounds good, it sounds crisp, sounds like a taste I can't resist. Long John Silver. I'll admit there are a few things you won't find here at Kuppenheimer. There's no factory rejects, no seconds, no out of date styles, no last year's fabrics, and no cheaply made suits from the Far East. What you will find are Kuppenheimer suits made in my own factory, sold only in my own stores. And there's no middleman, which is why a Kuppenheimer suit doesn't cost you $250 or even $200, but just $145. The Clark Bobcat Skid Steer Loader. It's the versatile friend of the contractor. A Bobcat can load a truck, break concrete, Landscape, dig deep, trench fast, backfill, move pellets. A bobcat can handle these jobs and more. Bright Equipment, 2935 Bluff Road, Indianapolis, 787-2201. Well, before we salute the Big Ten Player of the Week, which happens to be Ohio State's Brad Sellers, you know, Indiana has won 
20 games going into this one tonight. 20 games for the 11th time in Bob Knight's 15 years in Hoosier land. Knight's 20 win seasons by number of victories have included. Well, you can see 1976 leading the way with 32. 31 won by that standout 75 ball club and on down the line, 26 and 81. Then the 24 won by the Big Ten champion team in 83. 23 by the co-Big Ten champs. Remember the CCA championship in 74? The 73 and the 79 squad, along with the 84 team, all won 22. The 1978 team, with the one that went to the East Regional in Providence, great coaching job that year by Bob. That team wound up with 21 wins. And the 1980 team, the Big Ten champs, with 21 victories. And going into the contest tonight with those Spartans, 20 and counting. And hopefully good things to come yet. As is our custom on the tip-off show, time to salute the Big Ten Player of the Week, none other than Brad Sellers of Ohio State. The big seven-footer out of Warrensville Heights, Ohio, certainly had a two-game set last week. Home court victories over both Iowa and Minnesota. In those two games, Sellers, a total of 40 points, 23 boards, 12 block shots, six assists, and three steals. Brad Sellers, Ohio State, the seven-foot senior, the Big Ten Player of the Week. You know, we've been keeping track of the home sweet home aggregate all season long here on the tip-off show. As you can see, it has been doggone tough lately for the home teams to win, and we hope that uh, trend continues tonight. Last week, only four out of nine games to the home teams, 51 and 30 overall, the home court advantage. Here's a look at some of our scheduled activities. The Big Ten uh, swings into the final week with Iowa, Michigan, and Minnesota with the uh, home courts uh, tomorrow night. Then on Saturday, Minnesota, Michigan, Michigan State, and Iowa all at home. We do have a Sunday game to wrap it up as Wisconsin plays at Northwestern. There's a brief look at the, the standings. I'm sure that if you followed us all season long, you know where Indiana sits and what they have to do this week. Lots of people to thank. Jerry Wheatley, Jim Butler, our producers, directors, uh, all of the people involved in putting the tip-off show. Kit Klingelhofer for his input into the capsule look. Lots of people. Here's our address. Any suggestions? We hope to be back with you for Indiana University 1986-7. Well, that's the story for the tip-off show. We hope we gave you a pregame look. Bob Carpenter and John Laskowski in the Lower Mar Network. They call the play-by-play -play tonight from East Lansing. So long, everybody. <laughs> Indiana University tip-off. Brought to you in part by Eastgate Chrysler Plymouth, Midwest's largest retailer of Chryslers and Plymouths. sedan? Then head to Tom Wood Team Toyota where you get more sedan for less. Our Tom Wood Team Toyota full delivered price for this luxurious Camry Deluxe sedan is only $12,195. This is the full delivered price. At Tom Wood Team Toyota you always get more for less. Want more? Then head to Tom Wood Team Toyota just across from Lafayette Square. Our Toyota team is committed to your satisfaction. Of the three leading corn insecticides, only Diphonate gives you control without compromise. Control of both rootworms and cutworms. Counter compromises on cutworms by just suppressing them. And when it comes to rootworms, Lorsban compromises on consistency of control. Only Diphonate doesn't compromise on either rootworms or cutworms. Diphonate. Control without compromise. Guaranteed. Indiana National, on the subject of performance. One bank lets you start small and grow at any rate you choose with complete confidence. Because no matter how complex your needs become, Indiana National helps you perform brilliantly. 
Indiana National. More for your money. The 1986 session of Indiana's legislature draws to a close. Details after the game.